Hey, this is Brandon Schaefer with Five Capitals. One of the things we've been getting a lot of feedback about is that video where I talked about the five capitals and how they translate into the secular or the corporate world. We talked about how spiritual capital looks like brand and brand identity. Relational capital is about a healthy and productive culture. Physical capital, knowing the rhythms and cycles of your business or sector. Intellectual capital, having a great training or development initiative within your institution. And then lastly, financial capital is about market and market share. Growing the current customer base that you have and going out and finding new sectors, new customers to steward well all the resources and products that God's given you. Well, we've been getting a lot of feedback actually to uh, talk to you more about spiritual capital. What does it look like? What's brand identity? What are you talking about there? How can I be sure that I'm creating a brand and going after a vision and living out values that's going to help me connect to the world but also be distinct or stand out? in my market or in my sector. We're really kind of drilling a level deeper deeper into spiritual capital as it relates to brand identity. What we're talking about is vision and values. Vision is about knowing what you're called to do. Values is about knowing who you are. A brand identity knows who they are and what they're called to do. Vision and values within a workplace. And as I said before, strong brands know exactly who they are and know exactly what they're supposed to be all about. That's why Coca-Cola, which is a great soft drink company, doesn't get into the cell phone business. It's not who they are, it's not what they're called to do. And it's why Apple Corporation, that creates great cell phones, doesn't get into the soft drink business. It's not who they are, nor is it what they're called to do. This perfect intersection of vision and values is really, really important for you, both as a person and as a company. Let me talk about this visually, kind of what this perfect marriage looks like and what the downsides are if you go too far either way. So if I create an XY graph and I put values on the top and vision here on the horizontal, you'll see that it creates these four quadrants. High values, I know what my values are. Clear and compelling vision, I know what my vision is. I know what I'm called to do both personally and as a company. But you'll see that it creates these four quadrants, okay? Let's say that we've got a company out there that knows their values really, really well, but really doesn't have much vision, okay? What we say is that company, that entity, is probably gonna bring limited good into the world. It's probably something like a local store, or maybe you could say a mom and pop shop. Now, mom and pop shops are great. I love the local bakery, the local coffee shop, the local dry cleaner that we have here in town, but I sure wish there were lots more of them. Like I said, it's limited good. All these places have a distinct personality, a distinct style. I know the wait staff, I know the employees. It's limited good, it's good. I just wish there were more of them. But their values, who they are, what they're going after uh, as a store, as an entity, are real clear and real distinct within the town that I live in. On the same time, there's some companies, unfortunately, that they've got a vision. They're very ambitious. They know what they're going for. They're knowing what they're going after. But they really haven't discerned who they are. Their values aren't there to kind of keep intact the vision that they're going after. What are companies with a clear vision and no values? Well, unfortunately, those are companies that oftentimes are going to bring unlimited harm into the world. That's right, unlimited harm. It's gonna be companies like Enron and the big Enron scandal that we had. Other companies like Goldman Sachs that find them in the midst of amazing growth and profitability in trouble with the regulatory agencies and with the government. You see, they had a great vision, but they didn't have clear enough or compelling enough values to make sure that it's not ambition run, or, run awry. It isn't these Enron realities where things either blow off or at the very least get off track. And so we have to keep this ambition, this vision in check by having clear values. They work together. Now, if you've got no vision, you've got no values, well, you're probably closed. We probably don't even know about you anymore. There's probably no good that you're bringing to this world, to this industry. 
to the place where you live because nothing's keeping you together and nothing's pulling you forward. So what are the companies to know who they are and what they're called to do? The good they're called to bring in the world? High vision, high values? Well, those are the brands. Those are those brand names that you know so well, whether it's Chick-fil-A, whether it's Apple Corporation, Google, Microsoft, all these people know their hedgehog. They know their niche market. They know the, prog- the products that they're the best in the world at. And with that vision, with that reality, they also know who they are and who they're not. If you want to grow your business, if you want to grow in your, as a leader, start first with your personal brand. Who are you and what are you called to do? And how can you connect that to the business you run or the business that you're a part of to help that culture, that vision, those values, both be lived out and go further? Because these companies, these brand, these brands, it's unlimited good. Unlimited good. This is movemental. This is long change. This is lasting change that makes a difference. Take some time to think about both you personally and you professionally. Who are you? What are you called to do? Help build your brand to help grow your spiritual capital in this world.